We are in a world of hurt and the data is bad. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have Mark Yusko forecasting the future of Bitcoin and the financial market. He says that the crypto ecosystem has gone through a cleansing deleveraging. The only problem for the general equity market is the amount of leverage currently in the system. Because the margin debt is still the second highest it's been in history, there is still a lot that can become undone. Let's listen to this interview with Mark Yusko as he gives his take on Bitcoin as a store of value and the current pattern of the market. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. And if we don't knock off this tribal and get people to come into the network, we're gonna have a really bad leg down. Because the macro is legging down. Yep. I mean, the macro is is bad and we'll talk about that. You know, I was out in Vegas and uh, I was with Tim Peterson. You remember we had Tim on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, Tim, I think does the best work on keeping the Metcalf's Law model up to date. And so, you know, when we were at 67.5, his model saying, you know, 28, 29, fair value. And what happened? Boom. You know, we came right back down. The problem is the, the model now is saying 18, 19. And I said, well, Tim, what, what the hell? What happened? He said mempool collapsing. There is just no one using the network. I'm like, this is bad. This is very, very bad. You know, we've had one major bankruptcy in mining and uh, I think there's another one coming and yet yet hash rate hit a new all-time high yesterday so so there's something else going on and um, so there, there's part of me that says more stress in mining you know the lenders had a bunch of bad loans they were gonna start seizing collateral um, you know, talking about all kinds of different things. There was one group that was going to try to raise some capital to buy out these these distressed assets at pennies on the dollar. Um, you know, the mining and the collapse of of miners in terms of bankruptcies that that could cause some stress. What I'm concerned about, as I said, what, what what I think this 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 day will you know live in infamy. Because um, what I'm going to say now, no one wants to hear. According to Yusko, all economies and markets will crash as soon as the system's supply of free money is exhausted. Yusko says that inflation is a fallacy that benefits only those at the top of the pyramid. We have the highest wealth and income disparity in the world because the Fed has been gradually removing money from the general public and giving it to the wealthy. We're back in a descending wedge pattern. And a descending wedge pattern for people who you know, don't do technical analysis is you have a base level price. And the price of an asset keeps hitting that base level, whatever that, that number is, doesn't mm -hmm. matter what it is. And it bounces, you know, because there's support at that, that level. But the bounces keep getting lower, meaning there's just less buying demand for that asset. And so when you get to the bottom of that triangle, I mean, it's literally a descending triangle uh, from left to right, you, you have a point at which either you, you break out and you finally get some, some demand or you break through the bottom of the wedge and, and there is just no support. And I, you know, what I tweeted in, in June was the longer we stayed at that 30 level, the more likely we were to head toward 15, which, you know, again, no one wanted to hear. I didn't want to hear. Um, and we did wick down to 17.5 or 17.8, whatever that final number was. And I, at first I thought that was enough and, you know, declared the end of crypto winter on, uh, you know, the next week and June 13th, I, I do believe, I do believe was the end of crypto winter. My problem is this spring looks like we could get a nor'easter. So I'm concerned. We've been bouncing around this 19,000 level now making that base. And we went to 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 5. And we are perilously close to busting through on the on the and and the problem is when this is what I was talking to Tim about, which which made me 
nervous. He's like, 10 to 12, baby. I mean, that that's that's where it's going. Based on says everything I look at, again, no one wants to hear it. Um, we're going to 10 to 12. Now, that's that's the bad news. Okay, we're we're gonna have this this last cathartic collapse, which again, I don't really want to have happen. The flip side is, the other side is I went back and I looked at the last bear market, the last cycle. And, and it's really interesting. If you count days, the June crash at Father's Day happened almost precisely within two days of the November crash. November 11th, we were at you know, 6,000, 6,200, and we cracked down to 3,200. And then we kind of bounced around 3,900, 4,000, all the way until the middle of February. If you count those days and then count back to June, you get end of October. So yep. we're within days of the quote unquote end of crypto spring and the beginning of crypto summer. Now the, be the crypto summer didn't go boom all the way up. But we had a leg uh, from like four to, to six. And then we had a little bit of, of, of resistance. And then we had the big moves to eight and 10 and 12. And it's interesting. So, so I'm, I'm torn. I'm, I'm like living at one of these, these portals uh, to the upside down. There was an element of number go up-ism that I think created... An, uh, an image of this sector, right? Mm -hmm. Get rich quick and scams and, and Ponzi's. That's not why you're here. It's not why I'm here. It's not why the people no. listen to this no, podcast no, no. are here. Not, not even close, right? But the fact is the bear market scared a lot of people away because of this number go up mentality. And if you go back to the building and and this is what, know, has gotten me so excited in the last couple of weeks is, you know, I went out to a couple of conferences and I met with these, these, you know, guys and gals who are building communities, building products. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here puzzling today. There's this, this new deal that unfortunately we didn't participate in. Um, the polychain led, um, this creating modular blockchains. I, I only saw the, the announcement and I was like, oh, wait a second. I'm, and and I, I dug into the founder on Twitter. But what he was describing to me was that fundamental, that if you could break the blockchain into three modular components, then we wouldn't need these monolithic chains that are so unwieldy as they, as they become large. And I'm like, holy moly, this could super accelerate adoption and integration and and we could get onto these new rails and i was like hmm, i need to spend time on this the opportunity to invest in innovation is is like you know only one other time in in the 90s around the internet the, the thing i am concerned about then and, and you know we started with this we'll end with it that um you know it we're at a perilous point and if we don't hold this this level, this you know 19 level, and we're already a little bit lower than that, um, there is air gap risk. And and look, it, over the long term, that's incredibly bullish if you want to own the the network. In the short term, it's going to be a whack to the narrative and to the the confidence. Yusko says that the continued negative sentiment, which results in more volatility, is the reason why it's still crypto spring. Many people were unable to purchase Bitcoin this year because they lacked either confidence, guts, or money. He says that when compared to three and fourfold assets at the bottom, Bitcoin and Ethereum are easy. Yusko asserts that we will soon start to inflect and that the system needs greater newcomers and adoption. According to Mark, people need to grasp that cryptocurrencies are the financial system of the future and our generation's greatest potential for wealth development. What do you guys think about Mark Yusko's opinion on crypto being the future of money and how Bitcoin will play a role? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.
This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.